What's up for today's review? Dr. John's Soap Base Volume 3. Hello again, Michael Freeberg here from beautiful North Carolina and I have only one shaving product for review today. But I should also note that I'm using a new microphone for the camera that I received as part of a secret scent in July. So I'll be really interested to know if the audio quality is better. It comes with two different, uh, two different modes. This is just the sort of bare naked microphone. The other option is with one of those larger kind of muffling windscreens that helps reduce echo in a room. So I'm going to try it like this for today. We'll try it using the other option for next week. We'll have a chance to compare and contrast and see which one works out better. So please let me know in the comments how you think the audio has turned out for this one. All right. Today, we're going to be reviewing Dr. John's Flowers in the Dark. This is volume three, the upgraded version of their soap base, which I already quite enjoyed. You can see here the soap. It is a hardish soap, not a hard soap, but definitely on the hard side of the uh, of these soaps. As you can see, a very cool looking design on the on the logo for the label. The scent on this, as you can see from the picture there, is a lavender. And I would describe this scent as kind of a somewhat sharp, a slightly acrid, very natural smelling lavender to me. Lavender isn't always kind of a very sweet, light, fresh scent. It has a bit of a bit of a touch to it. Uh, as does this, a very nice lavender scent, but it also has kind of a sharp tone to it which i think comes from the ozone and then there's a bit of a sort of a woodsy heaviness to it which apparently comes from the third scent ingredient coffin wood now, i've never smelled coffin wood but there definitely is there's definitely something else included in the notes in the uh, in the scent of the soap and it is a very nice lavender scent so if you're looking for that kind of very light slightly bright slightly sweet lavender scent that's not the scent you're looking for in this particular soap. This is a bit more of a slightly sharp, more natural, a touch of acrid scent to it, which I think is really quite nice. I'm going to be using for today with that soap the chrome version of the Fatip Testina Gentile. I'm using a blade in there that I've not used before. We'll talk about how well that's working. It is the Gillette Ruby Plus. Um, plus, just, I don't know why. Uh, and then for today, the brush is going to be another long standing favorite, the Samogue Owners Club Bore. So let me go ahead and start lathering up the soap. So there's a couple things that they wanted to achieve with this change in the soap base. You can see what remains from this week's amount for the soap, primarily focusing on ease of use. So better lather, so easier to lather, better slickness and better post shave. And I'll tell you right off the bat, you don't have to go any further in this video if you don't want to. They have scored very highly on all three of those. Soap is very, very easy to work with. It's got excellent slickness in the post shave well i'll talk about that during uh, during the shave so i'm just loading with a slightly dry brush if you start off with too wet a brush probably because of the loading bowl you get a lot of frothy lather but you just have to load enough and that is not an issue at all so i'm going to keep loading i only have a little bit left in the bottom of the bowl and that's always kind of the problem with these sunday shaves is that you have a week's worth of soap you try not to waste soap so you don't scoop out too much on mondays but that means that sometimes by Sunday, you have just enough. All right, you can see what's happening there. I'm gonna tip just a bit of water in there, and try to pull up a bit more soap. Yeah, this has been incredibly easy to lather. And, and this is a all vegan recipe that also includes a number of other botanicals. And I just wanna make sure we highlight again that you do not need to include tallow in a shaving soap for it to be a good soap. So if you like vegan options, please don't feel like you're somehow getting second best you are able to choose from a variety of vegan options in this current wet shaving market that are excellent excellent soaps there you go that is looking very nice i'm going to scoop that out wet my face that sounded way worse than it was and we'll start to lather up yeah this already has that kind of fundamental slick face feel I'm going to add more water, obviously, but let's get the leather going. Whoop. Waste not, want not. All 
There we go. That is starting to come together very nicely. Add a touch of water. The scent off the puck, by the way, is pretty strong. Not overbearing at all, but definitely, definitely strong. And that remains that remains throughout the shave, but less so. It becomes it goes from strong to kind of distinct. There we go. As you can see, that's creating a very nice, dense, heavy lather. And I don't mean pasty heavy, I mean just a lot of good, good volume, solid volume to it. There we go. Yeah, very nice, very, very nice. I think the last one I used of their soaps was the Hydra, which I think was in the previous soap base, and that was, uh, well, let's just say moved with my son once he uh, left from a visit here. All right, let's get shaving with the Fata Testino Gentile and the Gillette Ruby Blade. Talk about the blade and the, uh, and the soap in just a moment. So my first impression of the blade was that it felt very sharp. bit like a feather, very sharp, but not actually that comfortable and a little prone to nicking. Now I say prone to nicking, I only had very small spots on the bottom of my neck on the against the grain pass, but that's how I know. That for me is a, is a sign to be careful. But this blade has smoothed out quite a bit. Now I need to be careful right here because I had a very small pimple starting, let's say Tuesday. Wednesday, definitely worsening. Thursday, apparently there was a message from the Twitter feed of the International Space Station that they could see it. Well, it wasn't that bad, but it was definitely enough that I wanted to be careful shaving around it or over it. So of course, as is the want, as you're telling yourself, be careful, don't shave over it, the next instant, distracted by thinking about work, foosh, right over it. I don't think I need to tell you what happened after that. Let's just say, Little remained, but there was blood. All right, very slick soap on that first pass. Very, very easy shave. That Gillette Ruby Blade has smoothed out a great deal. Yeah, see, that just feels so slick. Hmm, good blast of lavender from the soap. Yeah, really impressed with how much they've improved this soap base. There we go. Excellent slickness. As you saw from the initial part of the video, very, very easy to build a lather, no issues at all. Nothing fussy about this soap. I think that's one thing to think about too, is that as people continue to work on their soap recipes and they're trying to correct for things like failure to lather in hard water or difficulty to lather in hard water um, or trying to focus on post-shave qualities or improve the slickness really is a difficult balancing act so that you're improving the soap but you're not doing so at the expense of ease of use. Well, at least if you are, then at least people have to know about it. You can take that into account.
but I'm a big fan of non-fussy soaps. Yeah, this is soap is making this shave really, really easy. Well, two days of growth, almost entirely gone. Now, I know that for some of you, shaving against the grain at this point just isn't an option. And, you know, you always have the option to shave across the grain, just in the direction opposite from what you have just shaved in. So, like in the case where I was shaving like this, or shaving across the grain like that, well, you have an option to change that up and go the opposite direction. You know, the thing is you have to let your face and sort of the comfort of the shave really dictate how best to get the hair off and don't ever get lulled into the sense that there is only the one way you know you're shaving your face well unless you're shaving someone else's face obviously but even there I would imagine you just have to go by the feel. All right, pass number three, against the grain. Yeah, there was a really interesting comment that somebody just posted, I think, well, yeah, it was on YouTube, about um, buffing versus long strokes. And for me, I tend to mix it up because I like the feel of buffing. I like the way that it helps take care of hair in those locations. But there's also places where a long stroke just feels as good or better. It depends on the razor. Sometimes it depends on the blade feel, how your skin is doing, how many days growth you're taking off. And I would never say, for example, that you have to buff because that's clearly absurd. But you should know that buffing is an option how to do it and use it when it's right for you. Oh, right there, a little touch. So for these blades right down here is where I would nick myself. Yeah, and that blade is a little a little touchy. I like it, but it's not my favorite. I'm gonna try it in a different razor for next week and we'll see what we get. All right, now, part number three, post-shave. So what I've been doing now is on Mondays, I shave, I just towel off, and I leave my skin be, and we just see over the course of the day what it feels like. And I have to say that I've done that four out of the six shaves this week because honestly, my skin feels really, really good. Very little tightness. There's always some tightness when you just towel off, obviously, but in terms of post-shave, I have not felt the need, not felt the need to use post-shave at all. I have. Yeah, that little spot looks worse than it is. Don't worry about that for a second. I've not had to use a post shave and even though I would like to use an aftershave splash because I love the feel of it, I just have not felt the need. Skin feels really good. Just loose and supple and hydrated a little bit. Now of course every soap is by its nature a bit drying but this just has a lot of additional fats and other botanicals in there and I really really like what they've done here. The post shave is definitely much improved. Very very happy with that. Now, do I wish I could reach for the aftershave splash? Yeah, of course I do, because I love that feel. 
but I'm not going to because I like I like how this is gone. Well, a very, very nice shave overall. Not super happy with that blade. Sharp, but a little bit, you know, you see just, I don't know, little touches here and there that nah, I'm not super happy with. But shave with it for another week. We'll see if it continues to smooth out. Otherwise, let's recap for that three-pass shave. That was quick and easy. Today's shaving product for review, Dr. John's Flowers in the Dark. This is volume three of their soap base. A beautiful, sharp um, lavender scent with a touch of the extra piece in there, the ozone, which I think adds actually quite nicely to it. And then coffin wood for a bit of the macabre, if you like that, like that bit of a touch. Very, very nice soap. Clear improvement over their previous base in, in basically every way. Really, really like this. If you're looking for a vegan option, do not ignore Dr. John's excellent soap. Loved it. The blade for today, which was also new, yeah, not super happy with those blades. Little, little touchy, you know. Meh. Nah, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Of course, the Fatif Testina Gentile, that's for me, has always remained a favorite. Very, very easy to use. Gentle, mild, easy, close, comfortable, not aggressive at all. And let's end up with the Samoog Owners Club Bore. Beautiful brush, much less backbone than a lot of other bore brushes. It doesn't have that kind of stiff, hard, like pro, not bristle feel to it. Doesn't matter at all. It splays, works with any soap that you have out there. Love that. And I just like the, uh, the natural wood handle as well. All right, my friends, we're going to call it right there. Thank you again so much for watching. I really appreciate the time you're taking to watch these videos. Of course, if you have any questions or comments on this video, or any previous video, please feel free to leave a comment or question there. I think that I'm completely caught up, but of course there are comments rolling in slowly but steadily. But thanks again for leaving those. Thanks again so much for watching, and until next time, goodbye.